bună ziua! Uh, hello, I'm uh, happy to greet you from Chișinău. I'm Leonid Melnik and uh, I represent Adami Media Prize in Moldova. Uh, we're now uh, on Zoom platform, but uh, also you can watch us on the website of the public uh, uh, broadcaster, trm.md, on the, our um, website, uh, Facebook, and uh, on the channel, uh, YouTube channel. Um, I don't think it's necessary to tell you, uh, our, our discussion is uh, in uh, English, but uh, you, have, you can choose uh, Russian because uh, we have uh, Russian translation. I don't think it's necessary to tell you what a Dami Media Prize is. Um, everyone already knows that it's created to uh, encourage filmmakers, journalists and uh, audio visual producers to promote um, topics of migration, tolerance, and uh, cultural diversity. I'll just tell you that every year Adami launches new activities which come to support video content producers who promote uh, cultural diversity, to promote their works, to help them uh, in finding uh, partners and uh, funding. Uh, this year, uh, this year, Adam Media Prize launched a new competition for TV series producers. Uh, an international jury has uh, already selected the eight best projects uh, that will support an online pitching uh, session on, on 10 December on Georgian Public TV. Uh, this uh, show also uh, will broadcast uh, in Moldova on the public channel Moldova One. Uh, you can access the official page of uh, Adami Media Prize, Adami uh, site, Adami uh, Media Prize EU, and uh, support your favorite project. Uh, we we, we were sure we, we invite everyone to support Moldavian project, Lost in Moldova, but uh, uh, why not? Um, you can support any project because all of them are very interesting and. Um, uh, <laughs> They um, are supporting. Uh, more details on the Adam Media Prize that uh, EU and uh, in the following video. Uh, I asked my colleague from Tbilisi to start the video. The Adami Media Prize competition has entered a new stage. In Cologne, an international jury selected the eight best projects with cultural, ethnic and religious diversity themes from the six Eastern Partnership countries. Armenia, separated. Azerbaijan, next station. Belarus, road to Slavalachia. Moldova, lost in Moldova. Ukraine, Dudu and Lala. Georgia, prisoner from Dagestan. The lion that guards the city. Bitter sugar, starting 1st November. On the Adami Media Prize website, adamimediaprize.eu, you will be able to view all of the projects. And from 10th November, you will be able to support their success both materially and creatively. On 10th December, the authors of the Winning projects will present their work on live TV to demonstrate the uniqueness of their projects, win monetary prizes, and seek financial and creative partners. Support cultural, ethnic, and religious diversity. Thank you. Uh, I invite you to support uh, these projects because uh, they need your our support, and uh, uh, it, it, it's good to support our colleagues. Um, uh, the second uh, year, Adam Media Prize organized uh, um, activity which called uh, Adam Focus. This activity uh, uh, personalities, uh, decision makers discuss about the role of the media in promoting tolerance, diversity of any kind, the role of the mass media in uh, uniting people on uh, discussing sensitive issues. Uh, today's uh, topic uh, is uh, the role of the media and social cohesion and the uh, intercultural dialogue. Uh, we have invited uh, Mrs. Liliana Nicolaescu Nofrey, chair of the Parliamentary Committee on uh, Culture, Education, Research and the Media. Hello, Mrs. Onofrey, and thank you for uh, finding time to, for today's discussion. 
Thank you very much. I'm honored for this invitation. And uh, the moderator of this discussion will be a journalist, author, and film producer Stefan uh, Siochan from France, but who now works and lives in Ukraine. Hello, Stefan. Good morning, everyone. Uh, you uh, work for a lot of uh, publications and broadcasters, and uh, uh, will be better if you present yourself. Yes, ju just a few words about my activity. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a French journalist specialized in Eastern European issues. I started my career uh, many years ago already in Romania, actually. Uh, and I've been working for almost eight years in Ukraine, where I am correspondent for the French newspaper Libération, and also for Radio France Internationale, RFI, so the French public uh, broadcaster. Uh, besides this, and this is also how I'm in touch with uh, Adami Media Prize, uh, I'm a documentary filmmaker and documentary producer. Um, I run this activity from Kiev, Ukraine, where I produce Ukrainian creative documentaries to bring them on the international market. So these are two of my activities and uh, I'm very happy to participate to this discussion because I don't only cover Ukraine but also neighboring country and uh, one of my duties also to write uh, sometimes about uh, Republica, Republica Moldova. Thank you, Stefan. Uh, before you start uh, uh, the discussion, I, I want to uh, inform uh, uh, we, uh, you can uh, ask uh, uh, any questions, uh, but uh, uh, for this, you have to, uh, to push the uh, button to raise the uh, hand, or you can uh, um, send your uh, question in uh, chat. And uh, Stefan, where I will uh, write these questions for uh, uh, Liliana Nicolescu Nofre. I think it's all. Uh, thank you for your uh, presence. And uh, Stefan, you have the microphone. Thank you, Leonid. Uh, Mrs. Nicolescu Nofre, good morning. Buona dimenata. Buona dimenata. Uh, I'm very happy to have this discussion with you today. Uh, I think uh, we are getting closer to the end of the, of the year. And it's a very good time to reflect a little bit about all the events that, that happened in Moldova this year, uh, not only in Moldova, but also in Europe. But I have to say that uh, 2021 was a very rich year on many aspects for Moldova with major changes, uh, political changes, but Moldova was also affected like all other European countries by the global COVID-19 pandemic. And my first question, I wanted to, to ask you, how do you see the role of media, of mass media in this context when social cohesion has been recently undermined by the COVID-19 crisis and when the border between information and disinformation becomes so thin, but also of vital importance? Well, indeed, I would agree with you that uh, the role of media is vitally important. And uh, particularly because now uh, more and more people have more access to a variety of informational tools and internet has become a very powerful tool. So we have a lot of media coming online and probably this is uh, the, uh, an implicit part of the development uh, of media in the future. Um, and uh, I have to say that the aspect of uh, media uh, uh, trying to uh, somehow uh, flow in between informational uh, parts and disinformation, it's quite uh, a challenge. Uh, we unfortunately we do have a lot of situations when the general public, the people, are um, uh, very much confused when they uh, reach for uh, sources of information, and therefore probably um, this is one one of the results that still Moldova it's not that far advanced uh, in terms of vaccination. And for us, it's crucial. Before beginning this discussion, we were talking with uh, Nelly about the fact that we already are so tired in saying hello on the 
media and not being able to hug or to shake hands. Um, and when we see so uh, such a, a big proportion of disinformation coming into the year, uh, it's, it's a pity because uh, this very much affects the security. Besides the informational security of a state, this affects the, the security of citizens. So uh, uh, in this case, uh, really a, a, a serious question, it's the question of ethics of the uh, media uh, providers, uh, distributors and producers of uh, information, but also uh, a question of uh, media education, media literacy, so that uh, the people are able to uh, analyze and to um, really be able to uh, consider which uh, bits of information are useful and uh, which part is disinformation or propaganda. So we do have a lot of issues uh, in this area and uh, unfortunately it's very hard to um, work on the legislative part because on the European level also sometimes it's difficult to um, really to, to tackle this aspect from the legislative part uh, point of view. And of course, uh, there are European experiences when uh, big uh, media providers do self uh, responsible, uh, do have the self responsibility, and uh, they care uh, about the quality of the informational product they have. However, in Moldova, we still have a way to go before we reach uh, to that. We still have a lot of, of uh, sites and a lot of uh, media that unfortunately uh, provide us uh, with uh, this information. Actually, we'll come back to the legislative part a little bit later in the discussion. But uh, if I remember, the, the NGO Freedom House uh, characterized Moldova uh, a few years ago with the status partly free media uh, landscape. Um, what are the main structural problems for you in the profession, in the media landscape right now? And what should be done uh, in order to allow Moldova to, to reach the status of free press like uh, some neighboring countries? Uh, a major issue is uh, when we do have uh, the so-called holdings uh, and when media property uh, belongs to uh, concrete uh, political parties or political people, uh, so uh, this is a, a serious issue because uh, uh, practically um, this gives the possibility uh, to some uh, interest groups to uh, impose or to promote uh, the information they would, would feel it's more uh, politically convenient for them. So in these terms, the, the aspects of... Uh, uh, the property or the ownership of the media uh, um, channels or uh, media outlets, uh, it's a very important one. Uh, secondly, uh, it's also uh, an important part uh, when we um, uh, look at the um, activity of the media watchdogs, if I may say so, so our colleagues from, from the civil society, from the civil society organizations and experts in the media are the ones who actually uh, look uh, uh, thoroughly and try to monitor uh, all the aspects that uh, concern the insurance of pluralism and the proper information of the public. However, uh, there have been many experiences when this uh, and the represent of, uh, media, we uh, did uh, have this experience of uh, uh, having the national uh, uh, public broadcaster uh, showing just um, uh, very specific one-sided opinions or just the opinion of one concrete party that has been in power. Uh, more than that, even after the uh, political uh, uh, changes happen, um, we still had seen on the public uh, uh, media channel, the main public uh, um, 
uh, channel we have seen representatives of concretely multiple timers of one concrete party, but not of uh, um, a variety of opinions or a variety of representation of various governmental bodies that have to uh, be reflected, the activity has to be reflected and has to be observed and has to be criticized if necessary. Uh, so, unfortunately, we still are trying to <laughs> address these issues and um, uh, to take some action into this direction. I think that you will have probably uh, questions about this too. You, you, you mentioned this very important word, uh, ownership. Um, I will take a comparative perspective. I'm sitting here in Kiev, in Ukraine, where the problems are pretty similar to, to Moldova. Uh, you might know that last week, uh, the team of the Kiev Post has been sacked by its owner and the newspaper has been closed because there was no independence of the media. Uh, this is also a question of ownership. How? countries like Moldova, Ukraine, but also other countries from Caucasus can protect media from oligarchs? This is a question that applies to, to both. And what are the political answers to this crucial um, uh, question of independence of newsrooms? Um, I think that uh, here, uh, we have to, to be very, very, um, focused on not permitting it's it's a, a little bit funny to say now not permitting when we in moldova we do have uh, still have uh, media outlets that uh, are owned by oligarchs and uh, sometimes by oligarchs that are uh, fugitives and we don't know even where they are uh, or by interest groups uh, very much affiliated to one party and another or uh, which were affiliated to one party and uh, slightly moved after the power change moved to another party. Uh, so uh, these aspects uh, have been, uh, have the legislative uh, uh, body tried to, to uh, work on this aspect of uh, property. However, uh, I think it, it, um, it's very much important connected uh, with the um, openness of uh, sources and uh, recently our colleagues from other parliamentary committees have worked on uh, uh, projects that uh, concern the uh, real owner or the real beneficiary and it's not about only media uh, 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 channels or, or uh, media providers but also about uh, other uh, businesses when uh, we have uh, investments from uh, outside of the country we have to know particularly who the owner is and who is the actual beneficiary, because sometimes th these are things that are also hidden. Um, uh, so uh, now, according to the new promotion provisions of the law, uh, we will be able, when this law will be um, promulgated, to uh, see concretely um, who are the owners and <clears throat> if there is a, a problem or not in this aspect. Um, also, I think it's uh, uh, very much important to have, regardless of the, of the fact that it's a public provider or a private provider, uh, it has to be very transparent in how uh, uh, it works and how the things are administrated. And if uh, these are uh, independent media that act from uh, grants uh, usually they are much more transparent and much more open and the information about this can be uh, found and uh, consulted, but this has to be ensured for everyone, starting from the public national providers uh, till the local ones, uh, till the private ones. So the, the transparency of funds and ownership is very important. Um, an important question. We know that uh, the law on public television in Moldova has been modified a few days ago. Um, it's a big move from the side of the new legis legislature, bringing the public television under the umbrella of the parliament. Um, but the political color of the parliament can also change in the years to come. In Moldova, this is called democ democracy for the best or for the worst. Uh, how to ensure in the future the independence of 
public television from any political interference from actually any side of the political spectrum? Um, I and my colleagues have been discussing these aspects for some time. Uh, and we started from the issue that, uh, unfortunately, uh, the national broadcaster was not an example and was not going align uh, the provisions of the law in terms of ensuring uh, uh, appropriate information of the public, uh, pluralism, of, pluralism of opinions. Um, so uh, we politically assumed that we will be making changes that might, might raise uh, such questions. Uh, therefore, uh, we actually brought the, the, the Teleradio Moldova back under the parliamentary control as it used to be uh, before the uh, enter into force of the code of uh, audiovisual ser media services. Um, and uh, um, we try to have a balance because the uh, parliament will have to propose members to the um, a committee that will supervise the activity of the Teleradio Moldova uh, according to the structure in the parliament. So three members have to be endorsed directly by the parliament and they should reflect the majority and the opposition. So this means two to one. Uh, if there will be another majority, it will be another majority, uh, but also opposition will uh, have to be reflected there. Also, we uh, asked uh, colleagues from um, uh, civil society, as it used to be, also to propose candidates. Uh, the, the difference now is that we do not go uh, by those so-called uh, uh, open competitions that uh, were done by previous uh, government. And actually, there were political uh, endorsements uh, and political no nominations uh, with, with just playing a uh, competition. Uh, the biggest difference that we would like to make is um, counting on professionals. So counting on professionals uh, and the, the area of, of uh, experience or expertise is mentioned in the code. We did not change any part of that. So the provisions and, and the co competence that has to be uh, in this entity stays the same. So we asked the civil society to contribute and to make their recommendations at least four places from the seven uh, members of the uh, supervisory committee, supervisory and development committee, will have to be uh, endorsed by uh, civil society uh, organizations. And of course the parliament would vote for them. But uh, the important fact is that we really asked everyone, uh, as uh, you say in, Ru in Russian, подставить плечо, сапуна умерул. Let's uh, go uh, for, for the best people because what we saw uh, previously was members appointed not according to the requirements of expertise by the code, but according to the uh, really political, um, uh, let's say, uh, ideas or plans of the uh, parties uh, which were uh, ruling. And the Council of Audiovisual that was supposed to announce the competition for the, um, so we changed the situation. Now the parliament uh, promotes the members and not the, the uh, audiovisual council. Uh, the council unfortunately was totally under political control. And therefore we saw what we saw. Only one part is being present, only one political view is being uh, distributed and uh, sometimes uh, concrete disinformation really well planned so that to attack uh, other parts. But as I, say, uh, as I said before, the main fact would be uh, who will be there. Uh, so now we have the first round uh, of uh, uh, preparation the decisions for the uh, committee of Teleradio Moldova. Uh, we already have uh, 14 CVs. So we will have to, uh, our committee will have to analyze and endorse or not endorse the CVs and then propose uh, them to the parliament to vote. And then the next step will be for the audiovisual council. But we count on professionals. One or two last questions before we open the discussion to, to the audience. Um, 
Uh, it's been only uh, four months that the new majority has been inaugurated. So that, that's a short time, and I understand that the law on uh, public audiovisual is the, the first move uh, which has been taken. Uh, we understand that there is a problem of political control, but also a problem of lack of resources in Moldova due to uh, the size of the domestic market. But is there, in the new majority, in the new government, a clear a political agenda to modernize uh, the framework for media and not only public television to give it more space more oxygen to develop its capacities yes it is and uh, for this year we will be working together with the other committees and also the uh, justice department of the parliament in order to uh, propose uh, new amendments to the law we also created a subcommittee because our committee is so uh, responsible and big. <laughs> the areas that we work in, it's education, research, uh, youth, sports, culture, and mass media, so it's a lot. We created the subcommittee that will closely work with the colleagues from um, um, civil society and also with our developmental partners uh, in order to continue the work, uh, which actually was done uh, not just in 2018 or uh, on January, January 2019, when the code came into force, but it was a long process of work. Uh, we would uh, like to uh, reanimate uh, the activity of the special group that uh, was focused on uh, improving the legislative part for the uh, uh, audiovisual for the media services. And uh, this work will continue. Uh, we will uh, uh, consider. Uh, looking into those uh, amendments that uh, were sometimes introduced overnight uh, by previous governments, not being clear uh, why this was uh, important to introduce, not informing, not discussing them properly. Uh, we also would like to uh, come back and already uh, we are working with the, uh, colleagues from Freedom House and the members of the, uh, this uh, large group uh, that worked on media aspects on the access to information law. And also uh, the law on uh, uh, publicity, publicitate. Uh, Adver advertising, yeah. Advertising, yeah, thank you. Uh, so these things uh, come in parallel. Um, we also uh, very much count for all the processes that will happen and the work of the new uh, committee at the Teleradio Moldova and the new uh, audiovisual council we count uh, for um, um, the, um, as I said, the media watchdogs, the, the civil society organizations that follow the processes related to media and the experts in the domain to closely uh, follow through and uh, watch over what parliament will be doing and uh, uh, on all the developments. So to closely monitor and support uh, the changes for bet for the better, and not just uh, you know just uh, uh, to say that we are uh, doing something from the legislative point of view. From my side, I have a last question, but of course uh, I would not tackle all the issues of the media in in, in Moldova. But uh, for me, it's an important one. Uh, Republika Moldova is part of a tense geopolitical zone. Uh, we see that the tensions are growing over the past days in Belarus, uh, in Ukraine. Um, so, some time ago, the, the Moldovan government li had limited the possibility for Russian televisions and TV and RT to broadcast some uh, news content, but also uh, political talk shows. Uh, the socialist government had uh, lifted this ban. We see that it's a, a crucial question. Uh, the Ukrainian government I mean, Ukraine is at war with Russia, but the Ukraine government has tackled this issue in a very harsh way, uh, banning some televisions which are under control of uh, Viktor Medvedchuk, an oligarch supported by Russia. There are also lots of limitations on Russian uh, content in Ukraine. How do you see this problem from your side? Do you think that there is a threat of disinformation coming from Russia-controlled channels and how your majority and the government want to, to tackle this very important issue. 
Um, we will have to closely look and thoroughly look into this matter because uh, it's clear for everyone that the security of the informational space in the era of uh, post-truth has become more and more important. Um, so uh, we will have to examine exactly how and uh, why were the amendments made overnight at some point. Uh, we also uh, would like to uh, consider how to support uh, the televisions and the broadcasters, the, the uh, um, providers and the distributors to support them in uh, creating and, and distributing uh, local product. Uh, nonetheless, the local product of quality information has to be also in, in Russian. We have to have uh, local uh, information accurate. Uh, that's why I was, I was talking about the social cohesion. Uh, it's important for us when, when we have this crisis. Uh, so uh, you cannot, if you not tackle uh, all, all the represent, representatives of the society, uh, if you not, do not uh, make sure that proper information comes to them, uh, we, we will be continuing to, to face this problem of uh, every uh, political party that, that has been active before trying to divide exactly by geopolitical reasons. Probably one of the aspects uh, that uh, helped us uh, and my party in the campaign was the fact that we focused on unification, on common values, on common uh, grounds that we have. Uh, and from this point of view, it's, it's um, important that this cohesion, it's also supported in the media. Otherwise, what is the interest? If it's to divide, it means divide, divide et impera, to divide in order to conduct, in order to own. We would not like to own. We would like to have common grounds uh, on which to base the further development of the country. And this is difficult when so many uh, disinformational sites, unfortunately, also come uh, in Russian language. And if to look uh, at our regions where um, there is a majority of population that speaks Russian, like in the South, or we have the Gagauzia region where Gagauz is spoken, but mainly Russian is the language of instruction and the language of operation. A lot of this information comes out. Therefore, I was saying that we need also local media to have proper programs of information in the uh, language widely sp spoken over there. So Russian in this case. Um, otherwise, we will not succeed because uh, an effort uh, to change the things in Moldova should be an effort of every one of us. Uh, are we in the ministry? Are we at the uh, parliament? Uh, or are we uh, citizens that work on, in the private sector or in governmental sector? We have to, uh, to focus on, on the same uh, aspects which uh, can be beneficial for uh, every citizen. I was not checking that much at the, at the chat while I was uh, talking to you. I'm turning to, to Leonid to know if we have any questions coming fr from the audience or maybe someone wants to, to, to react on what has been said previously. Are there any comments maybe? I don't see in, uh, in the chat, uh, maybe um, uh, someone uh, raised uh, most, the hand, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, my, I can't raise my hand, so I wanted to ask directly. So my question is about Transnistria, because you mentioned the subject. What type of information reaches Transnistria? Is there bilateral communication? And in what language uh, do they have uh, access to uh, public channels or just commercial channels? How do you include them in a common information uh, space? Uh, quite difficult. Uh, of course, uh, uh, many of the providers uh, from the right bank have a problem uh, with uh, having appropriate channels uh, in uh, on the left bank. Um, but one one thing that I, uh, we will be looking into, and, and this, of course, it's it's quite difficult, 
it's how to foster uh, partnerships and how to foster projects people to people, how to foster uh, projects media to media. Uh, this depends also uh, on, uh, on the fact if the people uh, really feel open or courageous enough to, to join them. Um, it's true that it, it's uh, only the national channels, of course, are viewed the, the, the channels with the national coverage are viewed uh, in Transnistria too, uh, but if uh, uh, only this is in your cable or uh, somehow you have an antenna that, uh, that uh, gives you this possibility. Um, I have uh, uh, roots uh, on the left bank. My mom is from Kamenka, from a very nice uh, place in, uh, uh, on the... Uh, on the uh, uh, left bank, and uh, I still have uh, uh, relatives there in Kamenka and in Tiraspol. Um, and uh, sometimes uh, when uh, some of the uh, Russian language channels criticize us, they see me and they say, oh, we saw you on TV. <laughs> but when I, when I see that they saw me criticized, uh, it's a little bit, <laughs> but they're still happy that uh, we can have this information. Unfortunately, as a public person, now I have difficulty of free traveling. And this happened also when I was a minister of education or now when I was vice minister of education. Uh, but still we have to, to focus on, on building bridges, really. Uh, people to people, organizations to organizations and step by step, I hope we uh, will manage to really to have a, a communic communicative coverage that will uh, ensure proper information in Transnistria too. Not to talk about education, of course, and. Uh, common curriculum and uh, also activities in all the spheres that our committee is responsible. I see one hand raised uh, in the audience from uh, Lisa Alpaidze. Maybe Lisa, you can uh, say your question. Uh, so, hello. Um, my oh. question is about. Do you hear me? Yeah, there was some some echo, but I think that now it's, oh, it's okay. fine. So my question is about uh, the fake news. It's one of the biggest problems the world has right now. And I believe that it's especially hard for uh, people uh, or for cultural minorities in some countries to find normal news and to have access to news. And what can uh, television media do for them? What's your idea about that? I didn't hear the second part of the question. Uh, the first part was about the fake news. And yes, and that... Lisa, could you repeat uh, your question? Because there was some, some turbulences. We didn't get... Oh, OK. So the fake news, as I said, is one of the biggest problems for the world right now. And I believe that people who are cultural minorities in some countries are uh, more threatened with the fake news because they have no access to news on their own language and uh, what can media do about that how can fake news be stopped between uh, cultural minorities um we are working now with our colleagues from the committee for national security uh, on a specific uh, law project that will try to tackle some aspects uh, related to fake news uh, now, under the pandemic situation and the, under the uh, crisis of gas situation, uh, our security uh, institutions uh, do have the uh, possibility and the authority to uh, close some, some sites that really uh, provide disinformation or uh, uh, proliferate uh, fake news uh, on, on these uh, specific topics during the uh, this uh, crisis situation, but uh, it will be important that uh, further on we will look into the both international experiences and also um, concrete provisions that we have now for the audiovisual council that have has to look also uh, on aspects related to fake news. Sometimes uh, even uh, between colleagues in our committee, we've had discussions about, okay, what is the definition of the fake news? Or what is the definition of the propaganda? So some speculations that uh, uh, you cannot uh, uh, reach a solution if uh, the thing is not defined. 
but I don't believe it's so. It's, if, if a thing exists, then it, it also has the possibility to be clearly defined. If to talk about uh, cultural minorities, um, culturally, uh, in the Republic of Moldova, uh, unfortunately, not for all minorities, uh, there were provisions to develop their own native languages. So the main uh, informational uh, uh, tools uh, for them, it's either the state language, Romanian language, or uh, Russian. Uh, as I was giving the example, uh, our colleagues in, in the south, in Gagauzia Autonomous Region, although they speak Gagauz, uh, and this is a, an interesting aspect uh, of uh, an ethnicity of uh, Turkic origins that, that is Christian, and speak a, a, a Turkic uh, language, but is Christian. So unfortunately they have instruction and mainly the informational part in the region is in Russian. And uh, the media in Gagauz uh, are not developed and, and not reached for because in the families mainly uh, the native language is spoken but the, the language of information is still Russian. That's why I was saying at the beginning of our discussion that having proper local media developed in minority languages is also important. So uh, in these uh, terms, uh, we really would like to see how we can support uh, regional media. Um, yesterday, for example, I was visiting the uh, Gagauzia region, but there we have uh, a television, a local uh, television uh, uh, broadcaster uh, NTS who is broadcasting also for the Bulgarian region, Taraklia. In the south, we have this diversity. And uh, unfortunately, or I don't know how to say in this case, uh, they still can, can have Russian uh, language as a milieu of communication, but then the issue is of the quality of information that is provided. Mm, then the other parts already come to the uh, our efforts that should be put in place in order to support um, our cultural minorities to have a better command of the state language. And here it's uh, something which really touches my soul because myself, I'm, I'm a teacher of Romanian as a second language. So this is a part where I, I try to do some, uh, some things, but we also will be looking into this so that uh, uh, the command of languages in which the information can be properly reached uh, is improved. Um, it's uh, also uh, an issue of the uh, things that we have to ensure via, via the public broadcasters, radio and TV. We do have uh, some, uh, not really talk shows, but some um, um, some, some shows. Yeah, some, yeah, uh, some uh, uh, bits of, of shows that uh, go uh, on air uh, in the languages of uh, minorities. Uh, but I didn't see, maybe that's also uh, some aspect that ha the, the future director general of the public broadcaster will have to really to look into and to tackle how to uh, promote these uh, uh, shows so that they are really uh, listened to and viewed and uh, uh, used uh, as an informational resource uh, by our colleagues of uh, different uh, uh, ethnicities. Uh, because sometimes uh, if you ask someone if they heard about the, uh, I don't know, the, the broadcasting uh, events or, or shows in, in Bulgarian or, or in uh, Romani, uh, even Bulgarian ethnicity colleagues or Roma ethnicity colleagues not necessarily know about their existence. So these, these things have to be improved because we have a national broadcaster. We can understand that the, public, the private broadcasters can have a, uh, an issue connected to that, but the national broadcaster has to, to do more. We have a question from Bilisi from Filomena. Yes, thank you. Um, I have more of a, of a political question, maybe, because um, the Adami Media Prize is also in, in the whole Eastern Partnership region, um, like active in, in media. But um, as I know, Moldova has a kind of a special role in this region. I mean, if we even, um, like, politically, we can call it one region. 
um, because in Moldova it, it's possible that the, um, it, it has kind of a, a most neutral function as I as I know. So there can be, for example, Armenians and Azerbaijanis come together. There's, it's, it's a, a place for, um, for people to meet where in other places it's not possible. For example, in Ukraine, you cannot invite someone. Uh, uh. So my question was, if, if, there, is a, um, if there is this, how, how to say, if this is fostered somehow, if, there is a, um, if this is an issue in, in also in, in political sphere, to have this kind of role inside this Eastern Partnership region and to, to maybe go more into this direction, to have more partnerships also with the different countries. Also, of course, in media, but also in, in general. Thank you. I have to say that um, uh, once upon a time, <laughs> Moldova uh, was really uh, praised for uh, what it has been achieving in the uh, Eastern Partnership. Uh, and after some time, we uh, somehow dropped drastically um, in fulfilling our uh, uh, agreement with the European Union and also uh, having some uh, uh, inadequacies when it comes to the rule of law. And uh, you probably saw that the main things that we uh, really are focused on now, it's uh, uh, the justice uh, part, uh, trying to really to achieve uh, a difference there and having uh, cleaned up the uh, judicial and the um, prosecution uh, organs. Um, of course, we understand that from one point of view, we, we are a very small country, but from another point of view, we are very uh, interestingly located uh, in a region where such, uh, uh, let's say, bigger countries and, and bigger powers uh, somehow meet. So we have to, to find ways uh, on uh, putting ourselves in a position, in a position at least to facilitate some of the uh, uh, developments uh, in the region. However, as I said, we are a small country. So in order to do that, we have to become a good example concretely uh, in developments in a concrete sphere. Um, justice, um, uh, also uh, freedom of speech and uh, insurance of uh, independence of media, uh, definitely. And uh, nonetheless, uh, I think that we should use the cultural uh, heritage and the possibilities of our country and uh, really the, the aspects related to the intercultural dialogue that we can develop. Uh, since we do have, uh, uh, in our country, we do have Romanians as a basic population, but we do have Russians, we do have Ukrainians, we do have Bulgarians, we do have uh, Gagauz, uh, so all the countries around us are very much connected uh, uh, as good relatives to us. Um, more concrete actions, uh, I believe that we will uh, foster together with our colleagues in, in government. Um, I am ordered to, to be appointed uh, from Moldovan side as the uh, co-president of the group of friendship between the parliaments of Georgia and Moldova. Um, as I understood, it never actually really interacted before and with other countries also. The, the last years, there was not much interaction in this. So now we will have to look into it and uh, to talk to our colleagues in, in the Georgian parliament, to Mr. Kikabidze, and to see how we, we can uh, uh, really do something together and benefit from uh, um, our experiences. Uh, as I said, we, we understand that we are a small country, but we also have to be ambitious in order to become more vocal. And this can be done only if we have good examples of good governance. This, this is what I believe. I don't know if this was an answer <laughs> to what you expected. I don't see any, any hand raised, but I will raise my hand myself. Uh, I just want to jump on uh, something very important you mentioned, which is the cleaning of the ju judiciary. Uh, we understand that uh, the reform of justice and cleaning the courts fixing the courts is 
maybe the number one challenge of the country. Uh, it's also the same here in Kiev, actually. Um, people have to regain, I mean, there is not only uh, legislative moves, but the people have to regain trust in courts, in institutions, in judges, uh, when the system has been dirty for so many years. And how do you see the role of media in this process? How could media contribute to regain trust in the judiciary institution? I think that, yeah, uh, I think that media has uh, uh, put a lot of effort uh, in the previous years too to, especially media of um, uh, investigation of uh, investigational research. I don't know how it's proper in English. Uh, Journalismo de investigatie. Investigate, investigate yeah. media. Yeah. Yeah, so this uh, many times the, the investigations that the journalists made could be and could have been uh, a basis for uh, the judiciary part and the lawyers to, to start looking into concrete cases of corruption, of uh, misconduct, of uh, uh, bad governance, of uh, spending public money inappropriately and so on. And somehow, uh, many of these uh, really serious researches uh, has not, have not been taken into consideration by the judiciary um, or by the prosecution. Um, so it will be important now, um, and our colleagues from the uh, Committee for Justice and um, um, Nominations and uh, so on, um, our colleagues from, from the committee, uh, as you might know, are working on uh, several aspects of, of law. Uh, one is uh, the law on, on uh, procuratura, uh, so the, the prosecution. And the, uh, in, actually, in uh, all projects that are developed now on prosecution, on uh, the judges evaluation and on evaluation of the National Committee for Anti-Corruption, uh, all of these are focused on cleaning the system because um, whatever you might say, but it's not that hard when, when also the, the media sources are open and publish this information and, and this research, it's not so hard to see who exactly from the judges or from the uh, prosecutors uh, have not uh, uh, been uh, open. Uh, have been have not been abusing their position and taking uh, wrong decisions and uh, the second part their uh, life lifestyle is it appropriate to what they actually were receiving as uh, salaries or is that uh, way much or many times overcoming the these respective funds so that's that part of the evaluation of the people in the system uh, it's very important and we will uh, still uh, be very uh, focused on this. So media can, can really help and I hope uh, they will now receive more listening to and more uh, support also from the uh, officials. I see one hand raised again from, from the side of Philomena or is it, was it the previous question? No, sorry, I still have my hand from before. Madlock. <laughs> um, if there is no other question, I mean, I, I, I have, uh, sorry, one last from my side. Um, we, uh, Moldova is part of uh, uh, this geographical space, which I mentioned sometimes called post-Soviet countries, uh, but I know that the post-Soviet countries themselves don't like this uh, denomination 30 years after, uh, after the independence, but uh, nevertheless, there is still a sense of geography and uh, the Adami Media Prize also represents the sense of geography between independent countries with their own information space uh but now in, in, in independent um what, what, what i what i see growing uh is uh, over the past month is also a sense of better relations between moldova and for example ukraine uh we see lots of bilateral relations between president sandu and president zelensky yesterday i saw on social networks 
uh, the foreign ministers, Niko Popescu and his counterpart in Ukraine, having lunch together in Brussels. Uh, we see that there are connections, projects. How should this reflect also in the information space, in the media, maybe with a better coverage of the neighboring country? Are there enough news in the Moldovan media outlets about Caucasus, about Ukraine, about Belarus, and how should it be made better? I think that uh, uh, here we still have space to progress. Um, there are some news uh, which we see, but uh, I don't think there is uh, sufficient coverage of uh, what happens in the countries around us. Uh, of course, the better coverage is, uh, and this is a, a long uh, history and experience already, it's, it's with Romania. Uh, we have to uh, support this part. And uh, here again, of course, depends on the media, how they choose the most important uh, bits of information. But I believe that on the national level, this uh, cooperation has to be reflected and also the uh, good practices. The good practices uh, and experiences that exist in countries around us, we have to, to have uh, good relations with our neighbors. There was a period when uh, the officials uh, represented at that time by the Socialist Party did not communicate at all with the Ukrainian part. And you would say, okay, uh, a Socialist Party has uh, bigger roots in the Soviet uh, past. Uh, so it should have been <laughs> vice versa. Um, but I think that step by step, we, we have to look into all possibilities of uh, constructing, because the information will, will come when common projects are happening, common ideas are shared or common experiences are shared. So this will generate also uh, those bits of news. Um, I just will uh, you know, think that this is also a, a thing to consider for the national broadcaster, but also for the uh, independent and private media uh, to look more into the uh, information that uh, represents a good experience and can be a benefit for us. I do not agree with those colleagues from media who say that uh, we should propose to the public what the public would like to see or hear. Uh, I think that media has also a very much important educational role and the part of values of society and the part of uh, democracy, uh, so uh, the focus on, on the, the values and democracy and things that are really counting for us as a country should be reflected by media. Uh, it's not about, you know, uh, you want something sour, then you sell you something sour. It, it, it's very much about education and values, so. Is there any question? Maybe, maybe Nelly, I saw your hand raised. You had, uh, you had something to say. Yes. My question is a continuation of the subject. Uh, so we're focusing on the national channel, the public channels, but maybe in on the legislative level in Parliament. You know. Young people don't watch TV. This is a fact. And maybe on the legislative level, uh, there needs to be a public YouTube channel or social media channel in order to work with youth because they, uh, they are the ones to uh, inherit these uh, relations. I think we need to adapt to the new uh, wave, the new uh, times, and not rely only on the public channels. I think we need to pay more attention to social networks, probably in the legislative space. I also think the thing is that um, the online sphere, uh, as far as we know, it's uh, really difficult to, to be regulated. So here uh, we would uh, need really uh, exchange of experience uh, with other countries. Unfortunately, in Moldova, on non-linear services, uh, the Audiovisual Council did nothing. So um, bits of regulation maybe exist, but they were not put in place and not uh, really taken into consideration. 
but indeed you're right i think that we should look uh, what what the young creative minds uh, have to propose and in this case uh, even now when we were uh, announcing the the solicitation for people to apply for uh, ngos and and uh, the colleagues from uh, the expertise sphere to to propose people from uh, for being into the um, council of the Teleradio Moldova uh, sometimes uh, really creative uh, young people would not like to be there they say we can we can help otherwise we can help with ideas for projects but we would not like to spend time on sitting on a committee and losing our time when we can develop something creative so here you are absolutely right they are really the challengers and the movers and the you know big ideas generators so we should do that and an important question that we haven't raised so far is uh, the place of international partners uh, regarding the development of uh, media and public media sphere in, in Moldova. Uh, talking here from Kiev, I know very well the importance of the Donors community to support uh, the independence of UAPBC, the Ukrainian public broadcaster, which is again under political threat from the government right now, uh, threatening its independence. Um, the, the donors community, European, American, uh, Japanese, has helped a lot uh, UAPBC technically uh, from the editorial point of view. In Republika Moldova, what would be your expectations from the donors community to support uh, the development of media overall, but also maybe to specifically support technically and thematically uh, the development of the public broadcaster. What would you, which message would you like to, to send to the European donors? Uh, first of all, I would like to address uh, uh, a thank you uh, to every uh, partners that were involved in these processes before. Uh, during the years, we have benefited uh, uh, from a lot of support from the Council of Europe. And we did have recently uh, had the discussion with our colleagues from the Council of Europe here in Chisinau, the representatives that are open to continue to support um, both technically and also um, trying to look into specific issues that will be necessary to tackle when we uh, talk about the um, audiovisual council uh, where the monitoring divisions uh, still has have to to be enforced and, and uh, learn and be improved and uh, also uh, the freedom house uh, I, I think that now we will uh, uh, benefit one of my colleagues uh, from the subcommittee on media will be going to the Baltic countries in a project focused on dealing with uh, uh, fake news and propaganda and uh, ensuring uh, freedom of speech. So this is also a benefit for us. Also, Denmark is looking now into possibilities of supporting us uh, again uh, with aspects that uh, tackle improvement of the uh, legal part also professionalizing uh, the independent journalists and uh, supporting independent media. So uh, great, thank you for this part. And we are looking forward for the same support. Um, we are looking forward and we hope that uh, closer to the end of year or the beginning of next year, we will have a big uh, donors meeting, which will cover all actually the, the areas of development, uh, but of course, mass media will be one of the parts where we'll be discussing specific aspects with the, with the donors. So uh, in these terms, um, alineating with some critiques that have been in the uh, uh, voiced up by our colleagues from the watchdog organizations or from the um, experts uh, in mass media, when talking about the necessity of continuing the monitoring of freedom of speech in the Republic of Moldova, we do agree and we do insist because, as I said, we are not looking uh, to have political power on the media. We are looking to have professionals will, uh, which will not uh, be uh, ever uh, 
subduing to the political parties, professionals who will do their great job. So uh, our processes of uh, empowering media should be monitored closely by the Council of Europe and by the European Union, because we would like really to see uh, changes for the better and uh, definitely to um, take out any uh, uh, intentions or actions that will uh, try to undermine independence of media and uh, of freedom of speech. So please monitor us. <laughs> I see a question in, in the chat from Dachi, uh, a question to Liliana. Uh, Liliana, how big is the minority group's trust in state media regarding vaccination promotion against COVID-19? And how do you convince them? Well, uh, this is an aspect not uh, uh, only referring to the uh, minority groups, uh, it's referring to everyone in this country. And unfortunately, uh, even some channels with national coverage have been uh, very much politicized. And uh, for example, at the very beginning uh, of the COVID, uh, at, the, at the beginning of the pandemic, Unfortunately, we had the former president Dodon speaking on the national channel that uh, this is not, uh, you know, it's not a problem. It's like a, uh, maybe a little fever that will just come and go uh, and so on. Uh, so uh, this part of disinformation and uh, inappropriate conduct of political leaders on the national channels or on channels with national coverage really affects every one of us. It's, it's not, uh, you know, it, regarding... Uh, uh, our ethnical uh, background. Um, so what we really uh, see now, um, in many cases where the um, media coverage, it's mainly in Russian, uh, this uh, division was even harsher or harder. And uh, sometimes you would see uh, information about only this vaccine is good, this is not good. Uh, this is what you will, it will do to you uh, and this this one will do and this will not do you know this is a, a, a totally inappropriate conduct and when a media channel or a media uh, specialist does not see that this is a damage to the public or this is a threat to the, the health of the people then it's a problem and we should have uh, and at least this is what we hope for that in the in audiovisual council we will have people that will really care about this and will propose to the parliament if there are uh, changes that ha have to be made to the legal part, then uh, we should uh, listen to them and do them. But this is a looking forward uh, uh, statement. I'm looking at the chat if there are other questions or other hands raised, uh, no. I don't fear, I'm a little bit can, conscious of the time. N Nelly, can you tell me how many minutes we have more if we are getting closer to the end? Nelly, uh, we... how We don't have any limits on time, so how, how, how much, however much time we need, you're lucky. Well, we haven't uh, any questions more because uh, we discussed uh, more than an hour. Uh, uh, just uh, if uh, we have some uh, very important questions, please. Because time is money, and for parliamentaries, uh, it's more than money. Yeah, if I may add, to the, yeah, if I just may add to the previous question, <laughs> okay, on how to to convince people, uh, uh, we uh, we participate ourselves as physical persons in uh, you know as individuals in the campaigns. And we actually uh, go, uh, we, we did go to the villages uh, to talk to people, uh, to explain to them. And to sometimes they say, okay, on TV, we saw that this is a problem if you vaccinate. And uh, we can show with ourselves that the, the problem, nothing happened. And uh, uh, in our families, we had vaccination from different sources and nothing happened. But then the issue is how really the, the broadcasters reflect these aspects. Because again, uh, if you see that uh, it's a bigger reach 
uh, and you decide to do so because a negative uh, information about how negative is the vaccine gives you more reach, it means that you are probably not a trustable broadcaster. Maybe as a conclusion, I will have a very last question uh, and then we can wrap it up for, for today. But uh, you're, you're, you're a member of the parliament. Uh, what's your bet? Uh, after the public television, what is going to be the next, next big discussion or next big move from this majority regarding media? What's going to be the next hot topic? Uh, what are, what's your bet on this? Well, it's, it's uh, hard for me to bet. Uh, now with the national television, but also in the same law, uh, we uh, did have changes regarding to the audiovisual council. Uh, I think uh, one issue that we have to tackle is uh, providing some changes to the law so that uh, small local uh, media is supported because from our point of view, this is uh, uh, these are source resources in, in the regions that can uh, ensure transparency of the activity at the local level, of good governance at the local level, but they have to be supported uh, both by uh, technical part and uh, here I mean uh, helping them to do some creative projects and, and uh, find uh, funding, but also maybe finding a uh, solution at the legal level so that they also can be supported. Um, I don't know if this uh, will be a very big uh, topic now. The biggest probably it's already <laughs> through, um, but we'll see. Okay, Thank, thanks a lot. Uh, I think that maybe we can uh, get closer to the end. Uh, thank you, Liliana, for, for this discussion. A fost o plăcere pentru mine să discut cu dumneavoastră. Eu vă mulțumesc frumos, încântată. I, I, I hope that the discussion was interesting for, for everyone and uh, I think that in the months to come there, there would be new developments in the, in the Moldovan media landscape, so maybe the Adama, the Adami Media Prize uh, can also reflect on this during its next activities and discussion. And um, Leonid, maybe you have some last words to, to say? I want to say also uh, thank you for all. Thank you, uh, Liliana, for uh, participating in our discussion. And uh, um, we are waiting uh, from you good uh, laws, not just in the uh, mass media field. Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Stefan. We are waiting you in Moldova to practice your money. Okay. Yeah, I hope so. I hope I can come soon. <laughs> okay. And, uh, <laughs> I, I want to remind all people to um, access uh, the official page of Adami Media Prize, Adami Media Prize that EU, and uh, support your favorite uh, project. Uh, thank you again, and uh, we are waiting uh, you on next uh, Adami Focus and follow our page adamimediaprize.eu because we have a lot of uh, uh, activities and um, I am sure uh, organizers uh, um, uh, thinking about uh, new surprises for uh, producers uh, and for uh, filmmakers. Thank yeah, you thank and you. Uh, have a good day. Thank you, Madlop. Merci to everyone.